Okay, good afternoon. Today we're going to be covering our story from James Joyce called Evelyn. Uh, very important to know, Evelyn Hill is a 19-year-old woman, a 19-year-old woman from Dublin, Ireland. She works at a store, at a shop uh, in Dublin. Very important to know. This is a story about paralysis. And I'm not talking about the paralysis of being in a wheelchair, no. I'm talking about the paralysis of making a decision. The struggle of making a decision. Do I do it? Do I don't do it? And this is gonna have a lot of implications in the family. Family are gonna be a big, 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 big influence on the decisions of Evelyn throughout the story. The story will be divided in two. I divided it in two. And I'm gonna say that it's an 85% and 15%. The 85% will be Evelyn Hill sitting at her home next to a window. And the other 15% is when Evelyn wakes up, and I don't mean literally, wakes up and like walks out of the sofa or the chair or whatever and she goes away from her house intending in this case to do whatever she's gonna do. So 85% of our story will be Evelyn sitting next to a sofa. So I mean, next to a window, sorry. So she's basically like overthinking everything. She's gonna be thinking about her past, thinking about her mother, thinking about her father, thinking about her brothers, thinking about her childhood, thinking about the neighborhood, thinking about her lover, thinking about what should she do, all of them, okay? Uh, we're also gonna know that Evelyn Hill will have a lover, close lover, whose name is Frank. And Frank is an, an Irish guy also, but this guy's gonna leave the country and he's gonna move to Argentina. At one time in the holidays or at one time he came to visit back to Dublin, that's how they met and that's how they fall in love and all of this and now they're making plans to go to Argentina. However, Evelyn will have that struggle, that concern. Should I leave everything and start a new life for Frank? What should I do? Remember Hamlet, to be or not to be. Same thing happens here. Should I do it or not? That is a question. She's gonna have that debate throughout our story. Okay. Um, Evelyn will think about three things. Number one, she's gonna think about the people that have left Ireland. Number two, she's gonna be thinking about the people that have died. Friends, neighbors, family members. And number three, she's gonna be thinking about her, her plans with Frank. So number one, she's gonna think about, she's gonna do in this case, a uh, recalling of her past, the people that have left Ireland for X, Y reason, things are not good in Ireland and blah, blah, blah. Number two, the people of her family members, friends, neighbors that have died. And number three, her plans to leave with Frank, okay? Where are they gonna leave? Well, they're gonna go to Argentina in this case, okay? So volunteers to be here ready. Volunteer. Volunteer, so. Go, go ahead. Okay. She's sat at the window watching the evening and made the app. Her head was leaning against the window curtains, and if her nostril was the odor of dusty croissant, she was tired. It could be it could be tired about so many factors. It could be tired physically, mentally, it could be other work, it could be I'm tired about the punishment, tired about the, the harsh that she's having in her country. So there's there's a lot of ways to be tired. But few people passed. The man out of the last house passed on his way home. She heard his footsteps clacking along the concrete pavement and afterwards crunching on the cinder path before the new red house. Very important. This used to be a place and she's gonna explain it, that it was very alive. And I mean alive is like for example when the bell rings 
at 2.30, you guys walk out of the, of the classroom. Outside, you see the school alive. Because everyone is outside, you see all, all the crowds talking to each other, and you see the school alive. However, you walk out, everything is so quiet outside, and you can listen to everyone. If, if someone is speaking to another person, you can be, basically listen to uh, the conversation because everything is quiet. Same thing is happening here. In the past, everything was crowded, everyone was outside and everything, and things are starting to change. This, um, the streets are, are, are not um, full with people anymore. This person is walking around the streets, and she could even listen to the footsteps of the shoes, okay? The sound of shoes. Go ahead. One time there used to be a field there in which they used to play every evening with other people's children. Then a man from Belfast bought the field and built houses in it. Not like their little brown houses, but bright brick houses with shiny roofs. So it's like it's like everything happened, like everything that happens in a way. Everything is great. We got the fields, we got nature, we have environment. And what is the problem that human beings always do? We need to fill nature with concrete, either to create houses, either to create hospitals, either to create museums, either to create coliseums, either to create malls, either to create train stations, and as our time has gone on and on and on, look at pictures. Look at pictures of Puerto Rico in the early 1900s. And look at pictures now. Same place, how it's now all crowded and all filled up with concrete. New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, every country has had that problematic. We think that as an evolution, as we should go on, well, we need more concrete and more concrete, and everything becomes a necessity. No, but we need a hospital because we got people that are sick, we build a new hospital. We need a coliseum because uh, we need a sports team for basketball, build a new coliseum, more concrete. Look, have you, have you, have you seen the, the, the videos when there's a game Super Bowl, you know that, that they have like the cameras on top of the stadium. When you see the stadium, you see the stadium and it's built up to the parking lot in a bunch of buildings. You basically don't see um, trees around it because it's all full, filled up with concrete. The same problematic that Evelyn is bringing up. Like we used to have greatness. I'm gonna tell you, talk to your, to your parents. Talk to your grandparents. How life in the country, in the town was before. Everything happy, everything, like they did a bunch of things. No cell phones, no technology, more interaction. And all of that has been lost throughout our years. Okay, go ahead and see, you wanna say something about it? Huh? Go ahead, huh? You covered it. The children of the avenue used to play together in that field, out, in that field of divines, Those are the last name of the neighbors, okay? She and her brothers and sisters. Ernest, however, never played. He was too grown up. Her father used often to hunt them in out of the field with his black black thorn stick. But usually little he he used to keep Nick's and call out when he saw her father. Still they seemed to have been rather happy. Her father was not so bad. Her father was not so bad then. So apparently the father wasn't like he is now. His father has what? Change. Change. What's gonna lead him up to that change? We're gonna know. And besides, her mother was alive. Oof. So that means that the mother is what? Dead. So that means that what is being the consequence of this change in behavior, change in the way the father is now? mother's death. Very crucial here. That was a long time ago. She and her brothers and sisters were all grown up for her. So they were all grown up when this happened. Sissy Dunn was dead too, and the waters had gone back to England. Everything changes. Now she's going to go away like the others, to leave her home. Home. She looked, up, she looked around the room, reviewing all its familiar objects, which she had dusted once a week for so many years. Wondering where on earth all the dust came from. Perhaps she would never see again those familiar objects from which she had never taken a being divided. And yet during all those years, she had never found out.
Look at how bad things are that even the priest has gone away to Melbourne. He had been a school friend of her father. Whenever he showed the photographs to a visitor, her father used to pass it with a casual word. He is in Melbourne. She had consented to go away, to leave her home. Was that why? She tried to weigh each side of the question. So the debate is here. Should I leave, leave everything behind, or should I start a new life? What should I do? In her home anyway, she had shelter and food. She had those who she had known all her life about her. Of course, she had to work hard, both in the house and at business. What would they say of her in the stores when they found out that she had, to, she had run away with a fellow? The thoughts of what the people will say if they find out that I'm running away with a fellow. So that's also bothering her and her thoughts. And that's been that's also an influence on her decision. I'm gonna tell you something. You're gonna have that struggle in a few weeks if you have not had it already, or in a few months, or in the upcoming years. When you have the decision, should I go to this university or this other university? And at some point you have the opportunity to go away from home should I leave and like leave everything that I have my room my stuff um, how comfortable I am at home I don't have to pay for the bills everything is great if I go away I have to start a new life I have to pay for everything I have to find a job and you're gonna have that debate for others are gonna be harder than others for others are gonna be like ah, I'm staying and others are gonna be no I want to leave because I just want to get out of here so it's a debate and you're going to enter that debate once you graduate from average high school. Go ahead. Say she was a fool, perhaps. And her place would be filled up by advertisements. Miss Gavan would be glad. She had always had an edge on her, especially whenever there were people listening. Miss Hill, don't you see these ladies are waiting? Look lively, Miss Hill, please. She would not cry many tears at Mickey's source. But in her new home, in a distant unknown country, it would not be like that. Then she would be married, she, Evelyn. People would treat her with respect then. She would not be treated as her mother had been. Even now, though she was over 19, she sometimes felt, her, sometimes felt herself in danger of her father's violence. She knew it was that, she knew it was that that had given her the palpitation. When they were growing up, he had never gone for her like he used to go for Harry and Ernest, because she was a girl, but laterly, laterly, laterly. Laterly. He had begun to threaten her and say what he would do to her, only for dead mother's sake. So, even though she's 19, 19, she feels that fear for her father, so her father represents authority, that this patriarch figure, but it also represents a threat. If you see the situation, when they were younger, the father will go more with the brothers because they're males, and he will leave her alone because she was a female. But as the mother dies, in some way, he's gonna start threatening her. But in some ways, it's like, you can see the dad as taking all that anger on Evelyn because in some way he could think that everything that happened to the mother in some way was the fault of Evelyn. Remember, mother is gone. Evelyn is gonna have a very important role in this family. So Evelyn is gonna, is gonna represent in some way the face of the family, the head of the family. And that's something that the father will, will, will constantly be there like, like blaming and questioning your mother is not here because of you and probably that's that's why they're having this type of friction right and though she had nobody to protect her Ernest was dead and Harry who was in the church decorating business was nearly always down somewhere in the country besides the invariable squabble for money on Saturday nights had begun to weary her on weekly. she always gave her entire wages seven shillings and Harry always sent up what he could but the trouble was to get any money from her father. He said she used to squander the money, that she had no head, and he wasn't going to give her 
his hard-earned money drove up the street, and much more, for he was usually fairly bad on Saturday night. In the end, he would give her the money and ask her if she had she any intention of buying Sunday's dinner. Then she had to rush out as quickly as she could and to her marketing, holding her black leather purse tightly in her hand as he elbowed her way through the crowd and returning full plate under her load of permission. Okay, stop there. They're having a struggle here with the money. Big struggle with the money, they're poor. She is giving everything that she's earning right there at home. The brother is, oh, helping. But what's happening with the father? She's having a big problem getting the money from the father. So the father who's supposed to be the leader of the house is not being the leader of the house. It's not giving that quality of life that they're supposed to have. So the only time the only time that he is having, in this case, uh, a help, is helping, is on Saturdays. And it's like, I give you the money, but you need to do groceries for food tomorrow. So she has to rush out and buy everything. Another thing, the brother is basically barely at home because he's working in the church. Mother is dead. We don't know nothing about the sisters that they mentioned at the beginning. So it's her and the father She's unprotected. There's no protection for Evelyn here. So the father, in some case, want to beat her up, can beat her up. And, and what happened with the brother? He would not be there to protect her. Okay. What? She had hard work to keep the house together and to see that the two young children who had been left to her charge went to school regularly and got their meals regularly. It was hard work, a hard life. But now that she was about to leave it, she did not find it a cool She's 19, 19 right now. Can you imagine that this happened, I don't know, like five, six years earlier? She could be like, what, 13, 14? And imagining you guys at 13, 14, that would be like eighth grade for you guys, trying to raise up your family and trying to raise up your, your brothers. Imagine you in eighth or ninth grade, how difficult that must be. And there's a lot of people that it happens to a lot of people in a lot of places of the world. So it's very, very, very difficult. If you imagine it right now, if you think that right now for you will be difficult, imagining eight, nine grade, how difficult it must be. Pay the house, pay everything. With one shift would be enough. So that you, you will need multiple shifts. So it, it will be very hard. Go ahead. She was about to explore another life. Frank was very kind, manly, and open hearted. She was to go away with him by the night boat to meet his wife and to live with him in Buenos Aires, where he had a home waiting for her. How well she remembered the first time she had seen him. He was lodging in a house on the main road where she used to visit. It seemed a few weeks ago. He was standing at the gate, his peak cap pushed back on his head, and his hair tumbled forward over a face of bronze. Then they had come to know each other. He used to meet her outside the stores every evening and see her home. He took her to see the Bohemian Grove and he looked elated as she sat in an unaccustomed part of the theater with him. He was awfully fond of music and sang. Maybe people knew that they were courting and when he sang about the last that loves the sailor, she always felt pleasantly confused. He used to call her Coffin out of fun. First of all, it had been an excitement for her to have a fellow she had begun to like him. He had sailed the distant country. He had started as a deck boy at a mound a month on a ship of the Allen Line going out to Canada. He told her the names of the ships he had been on and the names of the different soldiers. He had sailed through the Straits of Niagara and he told her stories of the terrible Patagonia. He had fallen on his feet in Buenos Aires, he said, and had come over to the old country just for a holiday. Of course, her father had found out the affair and had prepared her to have anything to say to him. I know these sailors, chap. The father already found out about um, everything. Remember that like, to cover it up, if he came and see her and everything, he will like not walk her home. Just like go see her and he will like be watching her while she walk home like from far away so the father don't know, but he eventually will find out. Okay, go ahead. One day he had quarreled with Frank, and after that she had to meet her lover secretly. So they apparently one day 
the father and Frank, they had a what a quarrel. They had a, a what? An argument. An lawyer. argument. So what happened with her? And she had to do it like in the side. Like at X, Y time that the father will not see them. And now the plan begins. They're already getting their plan to just leave. The evening deepened in the afternoon. The white two letters in her lap were missing. One was to Harry, the other was to her father. What do you think that letters are for? Goodbye letters. Letters of goodbye, very good. Ernest had been her favorite, but she liked Harry too. Her father would be coming home weekly, she noticed. He would miss her. Sometimes he could be very nice. Not long before, when she had been laid up for a day, he had read her out a ghost story and made quotes for her at the fire. Another day, when their mother was alive, they had all gone for a picnic to the hill of the house. She remembered her father putting on her mother's bonnet to make the children laugh. Her time was running out, but she continued to sit by the window, leaning her head against the window curtain, inhaling the odor of the sleeping bonnet. In that paragraph, in the late paragraph that we just read, look at the description of how good things were. Well, even though the father sometimes beat them up when they went to the fields with a stick, things were much, much better when the mother was alive. Down far in the avenue, she could hear a street organ playing. She knew the air strains that it should come that very day to remind her of the promise to her mother. Her promise to keep the home together as long as she could. So well, what was the promise? That regardless of what happens, such as you say. Regardless of what happens. Well, not that far, but as long as I can, I'm going to take care of the family. So that problem is another factor for her paralysis and not wanting to go away from, from home. She remembered the last night of her mother's illness. She was again in the closed dark room at the other side of the hall, and outside she heard a melancholy air of Italy. The organ player had been ordered to go away and given she remembered her father starting back into the sick room saying, Damn the Italians, come over here, coming over here. As she mused the pitiful vision of her mother's life, laid a spell on the very quick of her being, that life of commonplace sacrifices, clothing, and final craziness. Craziness, so that means that the mother died out of illness, okay? An illness of the mind. She got mad. On oh, that damn Italians coming over here, um, that could be a representation of like literal Italians. But it also could be a representation of the church. Like the priests are coming and all that. Remember, Roman Catholic. Where's the Vatican? It's in Rome. Where's Rome? Italy. So it could be uh, a behind the curtains representation of the church. It could be a possibility there. Go ahead. She trembled as she heard again her mother's voice saying constantly with foolish insistence. There are bonds around. There are bonds around. Okay, now we're going to go to the 50% that I told you. Now she's going to stand up from the window. She's going to get out of the window. Go ahead. Escape. She must escape. Frank would save her. He would give her life, perhaps love, too. But she wanted to live. Why should she be unhappy? She had a right to happiness. Frank would take her in his arms, hold her in his arms. He would save her. She stood along the swaying crowd at the station at the North Wall. He held her hand. Okay, right now, this is not, she's not recalling. This is live, what is happening right now. This is actually happening now, okay? This is not a moment that she's thinking about, no. Go ahead. The station was full of soldiers with brown baggage. Through the wide doors of the shed, she caught a glimpse of the black man to the boat. Lying in beside the quay wall with the moon. What do you think is that long roof, that, that whistle that of the boat? Remember the cruises that they did, like they they give that horn when they're about to leave, so you guys go back to the boat. That's what's happening. So the boat is about to leave. It's do or die. Let's go. And she went. Tomorrow she would be on the sea with Frank, speeding towards Buenos Aires. Their passage had been booked. So he got the tickets. Everything's set. She still draw back after all he had done for her. Her distress awoke a nausea in her body, and she kept moving her lips in silent, fervent prayer. A veil clanged upon her heart. She felt him seize her hand. Come. All the same.
cities of the world tumbled about her heart. He was drawing her into them. He would drown her. She gripped her with both hands at the iron railing. Apparently there was one of the railings and she gripped it. What happened there? She changed her mind. Changed her mind. She doesn't want to leave. Go ahead. Come. No, no, no. It was impossible. Her hands clutched the iron and rent the amethyst. So what happened to Evelyn? Stayed. She stayed. And Frank, apparently, he left. That's why this story is a story of uh, paralysis. Paralysis of not being able, being stuck in the same place. Not being able to move forward. Not being able to continue on with your life. And you're stuck in the past. Past memories, past events, your family. 